one of the most important nutrients for your crop that you may never have even used is boron. We're going to talk a little about boron, what you should look for in the soil test, and how you can fertilize with boron for your crop. First of all, I'll say this. I don't think that boron is the number one yield limiting factor on many farms. I will say this though, that once you get nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur taken care of, all of a sudden some of the micronutrients like boron could end up being your yield limiting factor. So I just encourage do some good soil testing either this fall or next spring on your farm to learn what nutrients are really important and then make sure you're doing a complete test to look at things like boron because this is one that we are seeing low to deficient on many, many farms. What we're looking for most of the time is about two to three parts per million on boron for decent yielding crops. Unfortunately, Darren and I look at soil tests almost every day from farmers all over the United States and Canada, and we see boron very, very rarely ever at two parts per million for two main reasons. Number one, boron is leachable. Now, it's not nearly as leachable as nitrate or sulfate. They say that nitrate is roughly twice as leachable as sulfate, but boron is way less leachable than both. So I am not super worried about it unless you have sand and you have lots of rainfall. But anyway, the other reason why boron shows up so low on soil tests quite often is most people don't apply a whole lot. Now, it doesn't take a lot of boron to get yourself up to two parts per million if, let's say, you're at a half a part per million today, but absolutely be looking at that on your soil test. One of the big reasons that I think that many people don't apply boron is because they're getting bad information and they're hearing, you know what, boron can be toxic. Well, sure, everything can be toxic at too high a rate. You can have too much water and kill your crop, right? But how many times were we praying for another rainfall? Boron is kind of like that. We need some boron out there. And yes, if you put a million pounds of boron out, of course, it's gonna wipe out the crop. So here's where I think the discussion should start, Brian, because frankly, we've applied some pretty high rates of boron on our farm. Yeah, we've applied three, four, maybe even a little more pounds than that per acre. You think about that, three or four pounds per acre in one application, a lot of people would say, you're nuts, that's way too much, you're going to hurt the crop. Well, look, the number one thing that safens boron is good levels of calcium. So as long as your calcium percentage on your base saturation test is above 65%, you're usually pretty good. The other thing you can look at is how heavy is my soil. If your cation exchange capacity is above 10 or 15, you're usually pretty good applying a pound or two pounds of boron. Like in our case, we did experiments for years trying, okay, how far can we push this based on heavy soil, high calcium levels, and we found we can actually put a lot of boron on. How we typically do it is with dry in the fall. And the reason why we like dry, it's roughly one-tenth the cost of liquid. But the problem with it is we want to go out and broadcast, so we're not going to recover all of it this year, and we certainly have the chance for losing it if it would happen to be light soil with lots of rain. So I agree with Brian, the liquid is going to be more expensive than the dry, but there is a place for liquid boron as well in your program. If you've got a growing crop and you can feed it foliar to try to push some boron in and get an immediate impact, hey, that's the way to go. The liquid boron can be used at low rates and there are lots of products and there's tons of experience with many growers all over the world doing this in different crops. And the timing on boron is one that I think is a little confusing for people too, because many say, well, this is important in the reproductive stages of growth with many plants. I'll agree with that, but you do need some boron all the way through the season. So putting some out there early, as Brian was suggesting that we do on our farm with the soil applied boron application, that's good because now we can get a little bit of boron in that plant all the way through the year. Okay, so let me step you back through why we have ended up doing a bunch of dry in our farm. We've identified that boron's been at least somewhat of a limiting factor for us. We've been really short on boron for years and years. And we've tried a number of different things, especially putting it on with the planter in a liquid fashion. Well, then it got to the point where we're doing tissue analysis and we're realizing we're deficient, deficient, deficient. And we're thinking, okay, well, let's put some foliar boron on. And in order to get a good response, we're spending 10 bucks and in some cases, 20 bucks. And I go, oh my goodness, if we're gonna spend 20 bucks, think about that at $3 corn. I, I, I mean, just to pay that back, I gotta have seven bushels and it, I want it to really, truly pay. So I could probably have to have a 10 or 15 bushel gain. And we simply weren't getting that. We were getting some gain, but not that. 
So we just thought, okay, how can we cut the cost down? Let's try the dry since it costs so much less. And we'll put that on the soil in the fall and hopefully then there's enough in the spring to get us by. Now our levels have gone up. I still don't think we have our levels up as high as we need them to be, but at least our tissue levels have certainly gotten better on our farm and we didn't have to spend a zillion dollars. Brian mentioned that nitrogen and sulfur and boron can all be in leachable forms out in your fields. Oftentimes we see farmers applying them at the same time since they will move with moisture through your soil. They could certainly be used in a side dress or a wide drop type application to still deliver them to your plant. And here's the other thing. All three of those nutrients kind of work together in the plant. They're all involved with getting that nitrogen to the right place at the right time in your crop. So boron is certainly important in how nitrogen is utilized in your plant and obviously nitrogen is a big part in yield. One last thing I'll throw out, there are some farmers out there who will throw just a little bit of boron in with every application they make. Now, I don't know if that's the way to go or not, but what I'm saying is if you're out there spraying four times during the season for weeds, for bugs, for diseases, all that kind of thing, and if you threw in just a little bit of boron each time, could that possibly help? Sure, it could. And if you do tiny little doses, I don't mind it so much, but again, I do have a big issue with, I'm gonna spend $20 and I'm only gonna gain three or four bushels of corn, that simply does not pay. We've always got to figure out what are the economics and we have to make money. Getting the right plant food mix out there for your crop is very important and so is weed control. Can you identify this week's Weed of the Week? 